Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. I'm on a bit of a sorceress kick today. Um, today we're going to be looking at Chain Lightning. So we uh, previously looked at Charged Bolt, and we also looked at Lightning, but this time we're going to focus on Chain Lightning and what Chain Lightning could potentially be good for. Um, so the difference between Chain Lightning and Lightning is that Chain Lightning is number one, it is not a straight line ability. And this is important because Chain Lightning uh, does not actually go through targets, um, whereas lightning does. So think about lightning like a piercing arrow. It travels in one direction, it keeps going at in that direction until it dissipates, and once it has dissipated, it no longer continues. Um, but it will hit everything in a path on the way to that particular target. So for instance, if I uh, cast a lightning bolt, you will notice that lightning just goes straight in a straight line. Now, when you cast Chain Lightning, Chain Lightning seems like it does very much the same thing. However, instead of continuing when it hits a target, Chain Lightning will actually stop, hit that target, and then it will start to chain in between those targets. And it will do a pretty massive amount of damage, although not as massive as, for instance, um, Lightning. So, Chain Lightning tends to be about half the damage of Lightning. Um, here we have two uh, abilities, Lightning and Chain Lightning, and they're both maxed out. And as you can see, Lightning is 4 to 11,656, and Chain Lightning is 4 to 5,979. So roughly about half the damage of Lightning. Um, now, Lightning, of course, can hit multiple targets if they are in a row. If they're, in, if they're all in a little row like Evil little beware. ducks. But that's not what we want. We don't want a bunch of monsters that are in a row like little ducks. Um, because sometimes that is not something that we can achieve. So instead, what we're looking for is we're looking for monsters that are all clustered together, but not necessarily easy to hit with Lightning. Um, so Lightning is good for those monsters that line up like little ducks in a row. But Chain Lightning is great for those monsters that spread out, but stay kind of clustered together in groups. So, like for instance, these guys. Notice how the Chain Lightning went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it bounced in between all the targets until they were all dead. Chain Lightning is absolutely great for groups. I have found that, um, that if you are in a situation where you have a large group of monsters and they're all relatively close together, but they're not like you know tight enough that you can get a lightning pierce off on them, I find that chain lightning tends to be kind of like the better choice. Um, the downside, of course, of chain lightning is that it doesn't pierce. So unlike lightning, you're not going to get off a uh, hit on multiple targets. However, I have noticed it does kind of pierce um, when it's traveling in between monsters. So if it travels in between two monsters and those monsters are um, relatively um, <coughs> close together, uh, the lightning can hit multiple targets I've seen as it's traveling through the air in between other targets. Um, so like, you know, for instance, if it's traveling between two um, fallen shamans, and there happens to be a fallen in the middle between the two fallen shamans, I've noticed that sometimes it will hit that fallen shaman anyway and do a pretty significant amount of damage. Now, if I killed that same group of monsters with lightning, it would probably require me quite a few casts of lightning to get the same effect. And the funny thing is, is that you can't tell the difference. Like, you literally cannot tell the difference between whether I'm firing chain lightning or lightning. Which one is chain lightning and which one is lightning? Can you guys tell? because there's no difference in the animation. Even in the old version of the game, there was no difference in the animation. Um, so, you know, you don't really even know the difference between which one is being fired. And, uh, and that's kind of the, a really cool thing, is that even in PvP and stuff like that, you could potentially be using Chain Lightning and Lightning interchangeably to maybe trick the target into thinking it's one or the other. Like, for instance, you could fire a Lightning Bolt first, and it could go through you know, his minions or whatever, and not hit him, and then fire a chain lightning, hit his minions, and then it might chain into him and do massive amounts of damage. Now, just like lightning, chain lightning also suffers from a huge penalty as far as the variance. Not as big of a variance problem as lightning, whereas it's 4 to 11,000, but still a pretty big variance of 4 to 5,979, which means that the chain lightning can hit for nothing. I mean, imagine you're in hell difficulty, you fire off your your chain lightning at a group of monsters, and it tickles them. And they're like, ooh, it tickles. 
little bit embarrassing. And, uh, and that's kind of what happens sometimes with Chain Lightning, because, of course, Chain Lightning sometimes hits for 5979 and sometimes it hits for, you know, relatively nothing. <laughs> um, hmm. It's also a lot more accurate. I would definitely say that. Um, I was trying to think off the top of my head, but it, Chain Lightning definitely is more accurate than Lightning because, of course, if you hit one target, um, it will bounce in between multiple targets. Um, it can go up as high as, I believe, it's I believe it's 12 bounces for level 35, and it will just continue to bounce back and forth as long as there are monsters in the field. So, you know, if you're fighting a large group of monsters, in general, Chain Lightning tends to be more effective, uh, definitely mana cost-wise. Um, just simply because it just does a lot more damage um, overall per cast if you have a large group of monsters nearby. Um, let me see if I can play around with this. Of course, I don't have the right amount of points on this girl, but um, let's just play around with it anyway. Chain lightning. So mine is doing uh, 3,923, which certainly isn't bad. Um, and as you can see, one of the things that I did there, which was rather interesting, was that I used the ability of chain lightning to hit targets uh, without me being able to see them um, to my advantage. So I basically fire the chain lightnings off into the distance. Um, and as long as they hit a target, they will chain between all the nearby targets. I mean, you can see just how effective chain lightning can be in certain situations, just, just bouncing back and forth between everything nearby. It could just do a pretty massive amount of damage to multiple targets relatively quickly. Whereas in that same situation, I would have to fire multiple lightnings um, to get a similar effect because I'd have to shoot a lightning bolt at essentially every single line of monsters. Um, now, it's not to say that lightning is a bad ability, and against bosses and things like that, when you are by your, you know, yourself, chain lightning is definitely going to be the inferior choice. Because, you know, most bosses tend to be by themselves. When you fight Diablo, there's no other monsters around. Uh, when you fight um, Duriel, there's no other monsters around. Uh, and Dariel does have other monsters around, so it could be potentially useful to use Chain Lightning on her. Um, Mephisto most of the time doesn't have other monsters around. Or sometimes, though, um, you can end up with a couple of those Undead Lords and stuff in there, and it could be useful to use a couple Chain Lightnings. Um, if for the most part, though, when you fight big bosses... There's not a lot of other monsters around to utilize the Chain Lightning for. So in that situation, Chain Lightning tends to be the inferior choice, and Lightning tends to be the superior one, because Lightning does a lot better versus a single target. And, uh, and that's kind of what you're looking at with stuff like this, if you're looking at um, single target damage. Um, in order of, uh, of single target damage, by the way, it pretty much goes like this. Um, Nova is the lowest single target's damage out of all of the abilities. Um, lightning, I think Thunderstorm is the um, second lowest. Chain Lightning is the third lowest, or the or the uh, third best single target damage uh, for Lightning skills. Uh, lightning is the second highest single target damage. And you might be like, wait, what? What? There's something higher than Lightning? Charge Bolt is actually higher than Lightning. Um, if you have a really, really good charge bolt, really, really nicely built up, you can do potentially anywhere between uh, like 30,000 to something like 60 or 70,000 damage per charge bolt cast. And because charge bolt doesn't follow the terrible, um, the terrible breakpoints of uh, lightning, if you pull up the faster cast breakpoints, faster cast breakpoints. If you pull up the faster cast breakpoints, um, you come up with uh, Sorceress, and specifically it will tell you that the fa faster cast breakpoints for Lightning and Chain Lightning are different 
than that of Charged Bolt, which means that Charged Bolt can potentially be faster, or sorry, Chain Lightning and Lightning. Charged Bolt can potentially be faster than Lightning or Change Lightning, just simply because you can have more frames. So you can get seven frames with Charged Bolt, but you cannot get seven frames with Lightning. Uh, lightning goes as high as 11 frames with 194% faster cast. Uh, whereas you can get eight frames with 105% uh, with Charged Bolt on Sorceress, which is interesting. Uh, but keep in mind that although Charge Bolt does technically own the top spot for damage, um, it is only because of its shotgun ability. And I went over that in my last video on Charge Bolt, uh, but basically what it is is that you have to stand directly near the target. I mean, you got to be in their face so that all 24 bolts are hitting the target at the same time. And that's, uh, that's very important for the Charge Bolt shotgun sorceress, uh, which means that Lightning still wins anyway because lightning can be used at ranged, and obviously a ranged ability that does, you know, like a massive amount of damage in a single hit can potentially be better. However, Charge Bolt does not have the same variance issue that lightning does. So while you might be able to do a massive amount of damage with a single hit of lightning, you can also technically also do none. Whereas Charge Bolt does not have that variance issue, um, as you can see, the lightning damage on Charge Bolt is 106 to 127. And as you increase it, it increases the same way. So when it starts to get to the point where it's like 600 or 700 damage per bolt, the minimum is still 600 to 700 damage. And, uh, and that means that your Charge Bolts are going to be hitting for the same amount every single time with a very, very, very nice variance, a very, very nice... Um, um, I don't even know. It's not even a variance anymore. It's, uh, what is it? It's the opposite of a variance. It's the, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a, a steady flow of damage, which is very interesting. Uh, so Charge Bolt, um, Lightning, and Chain Lightning, they're all kind of tied together anyway. So you usually end up having all three, and you can usually interchange in between them, which isn't too big of a deal. Um, quite honestly, I do think Chain Lightning, Chain Lightning is worth using. It tends to be the superior choice in a lot of situations. It can be used very well to blind shot around corners, as I showed you earlier. So if you say you're in Crystalline Passage or something, you can't see ahead of you, um, you can, of course, shoot lightning down a passage, hit a target. The chain lightning will hit that target and bounce off of all the targets nearby. And you can do a pretty massive amount of damage to multiple targets that are off the screen even um, that you could not potentially even hit with lightning. Uh, lightning does not really have as good of an accuracy as that. I mean, you can't shoot a target that's off the screen and then bounce between several other targets that are also off the screen um, in that same time period. Um, in much the same way that decoy works on the Amazon, where you can cast decoy ahead of you and kind of figure out what's going on, you can essentially cast chain lightning ahead of you and do a pretty massive amount of damage to monsters that you don't even know are there, which is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, take for instance these guys. I'm going to cast a uh, lightning off. It's going to chain between all of them. And, and then it hits all these guys over here too. I mean, it just, it just goes off on its own and it just starts attacking everything. Um, so the last thing we need to talk about is the same thing I've talked about in a couple of these videos now, and that is the ability to break resistances. So lightning is one of the easiest resistances to break. Um, if you were to rank the resistances um, for you know easiest to break to most difficult to break, um, it definitely goes like this. Lightning is at the top, fire is second, uh, poison is third, I believe. Yeah, uh, lightning, fire, poison. Um, Lightning fire. Lightning fire poison, lightning fire poison, and then uh, cold is dead last. Cold is the hardest to break resistance in the game, and, and I have spent a lot of time playing around with this, and like 90, 90 to 95 percent of all monsters that are cold immune are not breakable. So do keep that in mind. Um, and I want to show you the, the uh, formulas here real quick. So these are the formulas. So if you want to break resistances, conviction and lower resist are the only ways that you can do this. Um, negative enemy lightning resistance, which is something that appears on items like, for instance, um, the Talrosh's Orb, the, uh, the Griffin's Eye Diadem, the Crescent Moon weapon, that will not break resistances. They will, however, stack with Conviction or Lore Resistance if Conviction or Lore Resistance have already broken the resistance. Um, and this is important because if you break a resistance, let's say you break a resistance down to 
um, you know, 99% or 95% or something like that. That's not going to help you out very much. Uh, believe it or not, 95% is pretty terrible. Um, let's say, for instance, you're a sorceress who has a 10,000 damage lightning bolt, right? So you're dishing out 10,000 damage. But the monster is 110% lightning immune. You have broken his resistance down to 95%, so minus 95%. Uh, which means that you're only doing 500 damage out of your 10,000, which is pretty pathetic. Um, if you have negative enemy lightning resistance on top of that, however, you can bring it down even further. Let's say, for instance, you were using um, Talrosh's uh, weapon, which gives you negative 15% in the set bonus. So instead of negative 95%, it would be negative 80% which is 2,000 damage, a hell of a lot better than 500. And uh, and my quick maths are always terrible, terrible. so let me just double check my quick maths, shall I? Double check the quick maths. 95, I accidentally clicked off the calculator. That's right, 80. Doubly check ling 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 my quick maths. So if you're interested in lightning abilities, if, you, uh, if you've gone over my charge bolt video, my lightning video, my chain lightning video, you know by now that the abilities all have specific uses. Um, none of them are particularly awful, and all of them can be very useful abilities, but you know the chain lightning doesn't tend to work very good against single target. Lightning tends to be the better choice against single target. Charge bolt is certainly useful if used correctly, but requires you to be in melee range. Um, whereas Nova, which I haven't gone over yet, is an extremely AoE ability, which will hit a large number of targets relatively quickly, but for a lower amount of damage. I've also gone over Static Field, which is also another amazing lightning ability, and quite honestly, uh, one that every sorceress should have at least one point into. Um, we're also going to go over Thunderstorm and, uh, and Nova, so stick around for those. Um, if you have any questions about Chain Lightning, feel free to ask. Um, there are a lot of items that have chain lightning on them, and they can actually be pretty powerful even on a non-sorceress. So I feel like I need to go over those real quick. Um, a very easy way to pull up items, specifically if you're looking for a, um, uh, you know, finding out what items have that effect on it. Um, Amazon Basin is actually pretty good for this. They have all the items listed. Um, so we have chance on cast. Uh, sorry, sorry, chance to cast on attack uh, for lightsaber phase blade has level 14 to 20 at a 5% chance. Um, that's a pretty high level. We also have uh, random ones that can appear on amulets, weapons, and rings, so keep that in mind. Um, on striking, level 10 with a 5% chance on the Storm Rider Tabar. Uh, we have level 17 with a 10% chance on the Crescent Moon Axe, Polearm, or Sword. Um, this is actually a great one for low-level sorceresses. Um, it's not a particularly difficult recipe to make. I think the hardest rune in it is a um rune, and um, it has negative uh, enemy lightning resistance on it, which makes it absolutely excellent for a lightning sorceress. So I would keep that in mind. And um, there is also the wind struck effect, so level 5. All of these are level 5, by the way. Uh, Storm Spire Giant Thresher has a 5% chance. Naja's Circular has a 12% chance. Cow King's Hide Studded Leather has an 18% chance. So very interesting there. Uh, we also have When You Die, 44% uh, chance. Uh, 44, level 44 and level 47, 100% chance from the Rainbow Facet. And level 44, from 100% uh, chance from the Death Axe. And then we have When You Kill an Enemy which is level 20, uh, 20 uh, a 50% chance when you kill an enemy on the Infinity Polearm. And this is rather interesting because uh, if the Infinity Polearm is an extremely powerful item. Um, and if you were theoretically to make an um, Infinity Polearm Sorceress, which could be a fun thing to do, um, and you ran around murdering everything with, uh, you know, I don't know, massive amounts of lightning damage, uh, maybe you put on a, a Dream Helmet or something, um, <laughs> the, uh, the level 20 chain lightnings that come out of this would actually be extremely powerful if buffed up with lightning mastery and uh, and the other effects. Uh, but just in general, chain lightning tends to do some pretty nice damage um, as far as uh, you know, just just standard lightning damage. 
Um, it hits multiple times. It will uh, it will go back and forth between targets. Um, at level 20, it's 281 damage with nine hits. So it's going to hit nine times, nine different targets, and it's going to go off uh, pretty often, especially if you're using something like a lightsaber phase blade uh, or an infinity polearm, which uh, could be an extremely powerful item for, for instance, a uh, spears on. The, uh, the new lightning spears on is looking pretty sexy these days because you can make infinity in a spear if you haven't seen um, I don't think there's anything else to cover for uh, for Chain Lightning. I do want to be thorough with these videos because these videos, of course, are supposed to be about those abilities. As always, I do appreciate you watching my videos, even when we are chaining the videos together uh, about the Sorceress. And as always, keep watching.